Whoa. Natural light. It's good that I do it this hour. Hello, folks. Welcome. For I'm the one, the only. Hobo Tom. And I do apologize that this video is getting, getting, getting to you so late. Um, I had a really busy work week last week. You'll see a little bit of that. Definitely later this week. I have to get some things together. I have to get my house together. I have to get work together. And I have to get some other things together. But I do apologize for this being so late. Kind of all backed up here. Let's see here. Do I have enough for... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But let's talk about some pro wrestling that I well, what happened last week? Um, based on the Techno Blue Rangers predictions, you had to fill in for me a little bit because I was at work. Techno Blue Ranger did okay for NXT Portland. For the most part, he was a 50 50 booker. Um, so kind of quick rundown with that. Rhea Ripley retained her belt. Finn Balor defeated Johnny Gargano. The bros are weights to cut the undisputed era. Adam Cole, baby! Retained his belt. Dakota Kai defeated Tegan Knox. That feud's going to con continue in the feud that probably ended was who retained his U.S. belt, defeated or North American title, defeated Dominic, Dominic Dijakovic. We're gonna be a 50-50 Booker. Eh, it's okay. And now I have some shout outs. Connor McDonald, for your comments, sir. This picture goes out to you. Yes, I do have a job. Actually, I get a lot more work coming up. So I have my life together, sir. I hope you get your life together. With all that being said, let's talk about some pro wrestling. Let's start off, unfortunately, with some NWA action. And for some reason, the Ring of Honor wrestling lets anyone wrestle anywhere, I guess. Uh, Eli Drake and James Storm. James Storm with a... When James Storm has a beer in hand, he's not allowed to go on the mic. That's probably pretty good. So it starts off with the Dawson's taking on the Bouncers. Um, let's see here. It starts off Zane taking on the Beer City Bruiser. Whoa. Zane Dawson's a big guy. The Beer City Bruiser, I never realized how big he is. I think by my very rough calculations, there was a little over a half a ton of humanity in the ring. That poor ring better be super reinforced. Again, this is all the Haas. Really harking back to the, the heyday of the NWA. It was great talking in the ring. Oh, the trade of chops. Oh. That made my chest hurt. The beer punches and then he bites them. But it's always funny. The people who have the least amount of teeth always seem to do the biting. Never quite made sense. Of course, the beer city Bruce then said, no, I'm giving him a kiss. That almost makes sense. That Haas suplex. Ouch. That hurt. Again, they were cursing. It's always funny when they start cursing because they, they will bleep that out. But the bouncer, the bouncers win the match. They, of course, go celebrate with James Storm. They start to drink, drink beer out of the Crockett Trophy Cup. Oh, that's becoming like the Stanley Cup. That's pretty weird. But overall, it was a good match. It was really entertaining. The cheeseburger match. Uh, 
Uh, Latimer comes out then. Uh, Tom Latimer comes out, does a promo. And then we have the match of Tom Latimer versus Tim Storm. Uh, Latimer jumps Tim Storm again, very heelish. The, he jumps him from behind. What heels are supposed to do, so that was pretty cool. Uh, Storm playing his mind games, and he shows his ring generalship. He goes out, collects himself, comes back in, takes control of the match. Then they try doing shoulder tackles, and both of them no sell. What's up, Cheese Do you want to be on YouTube for change? Do you want to come up here? Or do you just want your back scratched? My cat's here. She's just roaming around my leg. She just wanted to scratch. What if I see her leave? She just wants to go outside because it's nice and sunny outside. And she does have to get some outside time before I leave to get a whole bunch of stuff done. Because then I'm coming home late because I have to get that one thing, I hope. I hope it's still there. I just realized that yesterday, and I didn't realize I didn't pay as much for stuff as I did. So I should have got it yesterday, but that's okay. Then so they're both. Then they do the yay boos, yay boo. Trade blows. Tom Latimer then does the throat chop. That's so good. Then the drop some elbows and then a cross butt. Then across some cross faces. Really physical match. Again, a very typical old school 70s, 80s NWA match. And I love it. Because they always shout, this sounds to be the new thing. I just realized that. They always shout out, time to die. Latimer hit Tim Storm with a glorious DDT. And Tom Latimer defeats Tim Storm. Again, a really fun cheeseburger match. And then Mama Storm comes out. It's funny. You know, you're going to go on YouTube soon if you keep on being fluffy around me. And that was funny. Everyone wanted Tim Storm to hit Mama Storm. Uh, then Trevor Murdoch. Cuts a promo. The question mark comes out. Starts to sing the Mongrovian anthem. He's out there in his Kill Bill outfit. And there's there's a villain. The villain himself, Martin Skull, comes out, delivers from Ring of Honor. There's a promo there. He says, "You know what? If I lose, I'll pay you fifty thousand dollars, or five hundred thousand. That's pretty good." And I think part of the title, if you notice, there's some brainwashery going on. I love it how wrestling announcers just make up words. Because we have Ricky Starks take on Matt Cross. This is a really classic wrestling match. Son of Havoc honestly had a better look to him, mainly because he wore the black tights and a very generic mask. He was that kind of mysterious aura. Again, from the open highway, son of havoc. Again, just being part of a biker gang for or being uh, leaving a biker gang persona was actually pretty cool. But I guess that's a whole lucha underground. Even though there is no lucha underground. I wonder how many years they have to wait when Matt Cross goes back. Son of havoc. He just seemed cooler as son of havoc. I don't know. No, you just flopped them all on all my papers, didn't you? So cuddly is my cat. <laughs> so distracting is my cat. Uh, starts off again, classic wrestling, standing swishes, wrist locks, classic mat stuff. Then they go with a the mat. Again, trade of headlocks, head scissors. You kind of know the whole sequence of stuff. Headlock, head scissors, kind of pin attempts. That was cool. It was fun. It was, it was okay. Uh, the rope running was good. Then to the basement drop kick. Then to the delayed. Backbreaker, which was great. And Son of Havoc used to do that too. This match has seemed really slow. Especially when you see um, Matt Cross, Son of Havoc, in his Lucha Underground matches. are so fast, so frenetic. 
And remember, there's a time limit on this match. They only have six minutes and five seconds. Yeah, six minutes, five seconds. To actually complete the match. And then we're trading flex attempts, which is becoming a thing now. I can see it for big guys, but not these two small guys. I don't know. Then there was a swing DDT, the cross cutter. However, it ended in a time limit draw. Oh, well. But Ricky Starks did successfully defend his TV title. So now he has two spots in the Lucky 7 rule. So he has to defend it five more times before he gets a shot at the world champion. And I don't know what happens then. So this match, a time limit draw, it, it could have been better. It's a ham sandwich. And a Zicky Dice promo. <laughs> Why does every wrestling promotion seem to have that one scuzzball? Zicky Dice is that scuzzball. Then Marty Bell came out. And then Allison K came out. I didn't realize how hot she was in like street clothes. Uh, those two cut a promo. Again, former best friends. Then we have Melina. Uh, the NWA community says she doesn't have enough wrestling matches, so she comes out, takes on Tasha Steeles. Because remember, Melina wants to challenge for Thunder Rosa's belt. Uh, Melina, again, you still got it. She does her splits. Uh, I'll tell you what, Melina's a nest. She just slapped the spit out of poor little Tasha Steeles. And that, and that head driver. That looked vicious. I thought it was going to be the end of that. For the most part, um, Lena tends to be the bruiser of, of these two. She tends to be more brutish. Uh, Tasha, again, she did the uh, double little with her comeback. Uh, again, it was okay. There was a weak suplex. I don't even know what that was. It was like some weird botchy thing to a DDT. Um, Lena eventually did hit her split leg DDT. Which is, which is okay, and, and, and boy, Melina has, has, has some tickled bitties. And that, that purple haste bra, wow. Melina's amazing. But with that, Melina's victorious. Uh, it's a ham, it's a, it's a can of soup match. So then uh, Sal and Faye Valentine come on. Faye Valentine still looks like she's been doing something in the ladies' locker room that she really shouldn't be doing. Because um, they're there to watch the Rock and Roll Express taking on Nick Aldis and Royce Isaacs. Most parts of... St <laughs> and then the whole crowd starts saying, Sal stole your girlfriend. Sal stole your girlfriend. Uh, so the match starts off with a schoolboy attempt. <laughs> oh, that's never good. This is a classic rock and roll express double team for most of the entire match. Again, doing the fake tag, the rest back turn, so they clap hands really quick into the ring. It's like, I heard it. You better be honest about it. Uh, then, of course, the heels go all heel, the rope burn to the eyes. Aldous, Aldous saved the lives of Bobby Eaton. Bobby Eaton was going to do a dive to the outside. Nick Aldous, like, literally saved him. He ate that pretty good. Strictly business, again, they do always get their cheap, so cheap shots. Um, I think Aldous, like, you know, ripped the mullet off his head. What viciousness there is. And then... Yeah, Faye just looks like she's hopped up on something. And then Royce Isaacs gets the dirty pin. So then Nick Aldis and Royce Isaacs win. And it was a good match. This was another cheeseburger match.
And that was NWA Wrestling. For the most part, again, NWA is... Hour goes by quick. They have a lot of... They, they pack a lot into that hour. That's a good cheeseburger show. And then with that, I mean, that was, that was fun. Again, I do apologize for this video being so late. So let's take a little break. And hopefully I corrected all my video and sound issues a little bit. I think my camera is not used to doing all this work. Granted, it's not the most expensive camera, and geez, this microphone was free. So I can't complain, but let's talk about some SmackDown now. It starts off with a moment of bliss. Wow, SmackDown is getting very, very predictable. They always start off with a little talking segment. Moment of bliss, you have, of course, Oh, the amazingness of, of Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. Those two are so well together. I watched them on Drive Along. Was it after this? I forget. Those two just seem so cute together. And of course, Nikki Cross is calling her husband. We're trying to call. And, and it's just a very husband-wife dynamic between Nikki Cross. A very loving, cute, and adorable husband wife relationship between Nikki Cross and Killian Dane. I was so happy for those two. Um, Alexa Bliss is still single though. Right, Alexa Bliss. Oh, also, if you have a chance, I, I found this out in Discord. There's actually a video called Alexa Bliss by Bowling for Soup. I found that video absolutely amazing because one, it reminds me of Weird Science. That's gonna have to be my prayer. I have to find that. I have to find that DVD on Amazon. That was such a funny movie. Oh, so good. Again, old school '80s flicks. The, the special effects are absolutely horrible. But that's what adds a lot of the charm to it. So here, the first match, we start off. Uh, of course, Bailey comes out to interrupt Alec the moment of bliss because Carmella's there. Uh, Bailey. So first match of the night, we have Bailey taking on Carmella. Yeah, it's a decent match. Oh, hi, Leland. I just like to say that. And I just noticed this on Bailey. Did, did she get a, like a nose stud, or did like something pop up on her nose? Because I don't remember seeing that there. It might be a nose stud. You never know. She like went all wrong with Dylan. Uh, for the most part, there was a decent back and forth. Uh, Bale, of course, heals it up. Carmella can wrestle. Carmella's actually improved wrestling tremendously in like the past year or so. I remember her in NXT. She was kind of, yeah. But now she's actually getting really good. Again, Bale uses the rope assisted hammerlock. Again, being the heel. Then there was some, some weird splash attempt. It, 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 this match kind of was a little botchy there, but they kind of save it. Yeah, and this was actually really fun. That Carmella starts to dive all over the place. Can't have a wrestling match now without dives in it. Then Carmella again does the talking. The moonwalking trash talking. It was fun. Uh, hit the X Factor, the Atomic Drop. All those old wrestling moves that I can appreciate. Uh, towards the end, though, Bailey was a little much. She did at the elbow. Carmella kicks out, and Bailey actually kicked. Um, ba Bailey got stuck in the code of silence. And it's like, uh oh. Then there was a Frankenstein.er Can't move. I haven't so long. And Bailey won by a dirty pin. Wow. So Bailey's. Full heel now because she wins by dirty pins. Carmella put on a really good match. 
It strengthens Carmel's case to to be in, I think, Elimination Chamber. Which is the March pay-per-view. This, folks, I, I was shocked. This is actually a surf and turf match. It was also pretty long, too. Let's see here. Uh, then Bailey just started to beat up Carmella. Just to prove her point that she's a heel. Naomi with the super fro. Oh, Naomi. So good that you came back changed and rejuvenated. I don't know if she had to cut the suspension for, for, the, for the Usos habits. With the Usos. Oh, she just needed some time off. Because again, that WWE schedule. I think they wrestle. I think they're away from home. Like. 200 and almost like 200 odd days out of the year. That must suck. Range your tail. You come on. I'm just playing with your tail. It's nothing bad. That cat's back. And Lacey Evans cuts, cuts a really face promo. Again, USA, American Pie. I love my family stuff. Uh, then, oh, do you see Otis prepping for his Valentine's Day date? That's interesting. And then we have a handicap match. It's, it's Apollo Crews and Shorty G taking on Sheamus. And actually, in a future video, you'll see Sheamus here in Daytona Beach. I didn't get to see him personally, but I saw him on the closed screen TV, so that was close enough. You know, this was pretty good. Um... For a while, Century G's kind of double teamed Sheamus. But Sheamus, they're making Sheamus out to be strong. They did like super surgery or something. In the forearms to the chest. Are you not entertained? And then Sheamus is being the brawler. Paul Cruz hits Moonsault, but of course Sheamus kicks out of that. He, nailed, he hits Shuri G with a bro kick to get him out. Hits a bro kick to Apollo Crews and Sheamus goes over. Man, this match was a ham sandwich. And then Apollo Crews has a beard now. Hmm, indeed. Where are you? Oh, you're too far away. Which is like how, how cats are always just a few inches away from stuff they don't like, but but yet just pop like right next to you. Cats are the best. Then we have brother Hulk Hogan. Yeah, uh, it comes out. They mentioned Goldberg. Uh, Bray interrupts. Hulk Hogan mentions Goldberg. I've been in the ring against Goldberg, brother. And Bray Bray Wyatt interrupts. <laughs> he does all the classic Hulk Hogan tropes. He says, "No, this is this is the NWO." And I used to have the th used to follow the three requirements of Hulkamania: the priors, the training, and the vitamins, brother. And he said he got his body all natural. He just ripped on Hogan. That was the best, though. Then, of course, Huskis, the pig, is there. It's like, well, I could never be in this shape, so can I have chocolate? And Bray feeds him chocolate. That's kind of funny. Again, this is just all the classic Hulk Hogan. Two sweet groups. That was fun. Then we have... Sami Zayn with the ukulele. Elvis um, Cesaro's on a bell. He starts. He's he has a song about his proletariat cause. I don't know. The WWE's getting to some really weird territory. He has he has Sami Shea Sami Shea Zayn talking about. 
Terry causes on SmackDown and over on Raw, you 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 have the Monday Night Messiah. You'll hear about my Monday Night review later. That's just weird, and I think I was playing Candy Crush during that whole thing. I don't know. I just don't. That turns me off from pro wrestling. When you get religion and pro wrestling that intertwined with that serious a tone, it's one thing if it's comedic, like, I'm brother love and I love you. That's funny. A Monday Night Messiah, not so funny. So, we yeah. have. Well, if you've seen me with a ukulele, Cesaro on cowbell. And Cesaro just starts banging away on the cowbell. <laughs> and Sammy tries to play the ukulele. <laughs> Eventually, the, the crowd. Of course, they, the, the crowd's chanting, Oh, walk with a lion. Oh, walk with a lion. Again, you can chant. Anything to the Seven Nation Army theme. Jack White was a genius when he thought of that. Darn. Um, of course, the crowd started. Of course, Sammy had to tell Cesaro to, to lay off the cowbell a little bit. Once Sammy Zane did that, though, the crowd started to chant, We want cowbell. We want cowbell. And I th- I thought I saw the tease of a beach ball. So remember, Cesaro is the one that ripped up the beach ball. Because they might get beach ball mania. I wonder if beach ball mania is going to come back to WrestleMania. No, you know, someone's going to sneak a beach ball in. This is Florida. Uh, so again, the crowd started to take over, and that was fun. That was fun. And I saw that beach ball, I'm like, beach ball mania. Eventually, Elias gets in the ring. He gets jumped. Braun makes a save. Probably at... I think that's Super Showdown. They, they're all kind of wrestling in that like weird gauntlet trophy match. I wonder if we'll see them in also the Elimination Chamber. And then we have Date Night with Otis. And you see him. He looks rather... Redneckish dapper. He has like a vest on, a shirt. It looks like he at least flicked up his hair. Yeah, this is when you see that bottom 5% of NASCAR fans on a date. Not good. Uh, with this, he looks all like he's psyching himself up. And then you see the amazing looking Mandy Rose in that red dress. And Dolph interrupts. Oh, Dolph Ziggler is going back to his whole trope of womanizer. And a, we have broken Otis. Yes. And that leads us to the main event of the evening where we have John Morrison and The Miz taking on Roman Reigns and his Mystery partner. Ta-da. Yes. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. And this is different. And different is fun. Uh, Roman Reigns and John Morrison start off the match. Again, Roman Reigns is just too strong for John Morrison, but John Morrison is quicker. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Morrison. Daniel Bryan's strong. He gets the yes kicks on Morrison. Daniel Bryan hit a Frankensteiner. It's good to see that. Miz, of course, is off distracting. It was a cross arm choke by Morrison. Whoa, that looked vicious. Morrison obviously learned something in Lucha Underground. Miz is just best heel. And Baron Corbin comes out. He has his ticket. Looks like I have my tickets up there on the door of wrestling. And he's like, I'm going to watch this match for the fans. If he buys his ticket, he has his seat. He can sit there and watch the wrestling match. 
Uh, Morrison. Sean Morrison then turns into Johnny Mundo, the Johnny Mundo we love from Lucha Underground. He missed the 450. I'm fine with that. He starts doing all of his running stuff. He really picks up the pace. John Morrison. John Morrison as Johnny Mundo is is is, is best. Uh, it doesn't matter. Roman just clubs the Miz. It was a springboard into a Superman punch. Miz hits the no kicks. But however, we got to fill the death that fittest, baby. We got to fill with the regular old hamburger. Because Ben Coleman, once he saw that the faith is going to win, that can't happen on Ben Coleman. Heels has to win. Heels has to beat up the faces. That's the way wrestling, that's the way wrestling works. After that, that the heels beat up the faces. It doesn't matter if the faces win. The faces has to be bloody, and they can't have that nice, smooth, shiny forehead. Like that pretty boy Roman Reigns and the prettier boy Daniel Bryan. That uh, ugly looking forehead like Abdullah the Butcher. Well, well, maybe not that ugly. That, that's pretty, that's pretty trash can garbage ugly. That's, that's, that's like pug ugly, baby. They don't wrinkly faces, and, but they look so cute. But yeah, they got, they have to, they, have, they can't have smooth faces. They have to have bumps through it like my boy. Cody Rhodes. So proud of him for busting up that smooth forehead of his. Even though he did it the hard way. He, he, he didn't learn from me how to do that. But Corbin interferes. There's a DQ. Roman Reigns and Daniel and Bryan win. It was fun, though. Yeah, this was a cheeseburger of a match. And that was SmackDown. Um, again, overall, cheeseburger of a show. Yeah, and it was Valentine's Day. It's kind of that weird thing, I guess, with your date on Valentine's Day. Uh, so with that being said, what's going to happen for, for, for I guess, this week? Later, I'm going to put up the Raw show. And then eventually by Wednesday, someday Wednesday, you'll see when this guy, Hobo Tom, goes to the races. Wednesday, I'll also have my review of both NWA and AEW. I have to work tonight, so I can't watch Impact. Friday is going to be a yeah, normal SmackDown. And then, wow, well, that's kind of it for the week. I just have a lot of catching up to do, folks. I do apologize for all that. I'll try to get stuff in order. However, work happens. I thank everyone for watching. Again, if you'd like to leave a comment, 